Yo, this is Nova Trifecta. I am Jimmy Fedor, a.k.a. Alias. What's up, Nova Trifecta? This is Kendall Beck, a.k.a. Big Boy Troy. Yeah, what up? Just what up? Yeah, what up? Why so dry? I'm going to keep it gutter today. Keep it gutter. Keep it hip hop. Keep it real. Yo, you, you know what it is. You been listening to Savage Mode 2 by 21 Savage? No. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> no. I've been listening to that to that old Get Rich or Die Trying. Oh, okay. By that face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got you know, this maybe. for my thoughts. Now I'm rich. See the 20 spinning looking mean on the six. No, it's Mac Negro. What up? Cool, cool. All right, we are here. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about, first off, how are you guys week? How, is, is life going great for you guys? It's all good, man. Slow motion, I mean, again, I come with the same answer every time. It's 2020. So we all just trying to do the best that we can. Man, <clears throat> life is going good. It's a rough year, all, though. It's been a tough year. Um, uh, man, it's, it's been a good week. And all three of us, especially, all three of us guys are especially blessed seeing how, especially in our area, 365 guys that work in the Shell Creek mine just got laid off for six months. And oh, damn. I mean, right, right, here, right here at Christmas. And a lot of those guys, they are the main breadwinner. And I just, I can't imagine, you know, I know all three of us, we're still working. You know, death has affected us, but man, at least we're working and being able to support our families. And if you look at it from that note, then man, it's been a good week. I still got a job. I still got roof over my head. Uh, you know, yep. I still got a a healthy family. Is 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 as crazy as if kids drive me. You know, we're 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 still blessed. We're here. Man, yes, sir. That's unfortunate. Prayers, prayers to all of those families affected uh, by that, man. Yeah, prayers absolutely. To all of them. Absolutely. All right. Well, the first topic we're going to get into today, um, Shai wanted to talk about why people hate on LeBron the way that they do, create new ways. So uh, take it. Take that it, old ball-headed hey, 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 I'm going to be Don't honest. He want to be, I mean, trying to hey. act like he's Michael Jordan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, hey, to be honest with you, I'm going to be real about it. I ain't never in my life. I've been watching sports my whole life. I have never in my life seen a player get hated on the way LeBron get hated on. LeBron get Kobe. hated on LeBron. Uh, uh, Kobe. Kobe, my favorite player, but Kobe did I not. I know, but Kobe hated got on. hated on bad. I don't think Kobe got hated on to the level that LeBron get hated on. They'll change the narrative on LeBron so they can keep on hating on him. Like every time LeBron <laughs> pass a goalpost, they'll come up with another goalpost. Like, they'll change the goalposts, change the narrative. Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about when they see LeBron about to win his fourth championship. Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about this one got an asterisk by it. Or, 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 AD I, to, I, or you, AD but you MVP. told me, you told me that my Kawhi Leonard that I love, his two championships were weird because he beat a hobble Golden State. LeBron hadn't even had to face Golden State, and it's been in a bubble. I mean, come on. Uh-oh, what I'm saying is Kawhi Leonard got the two. I'm not saying that his two MV, finals MVPs are in balance, but I'm saying he got – they're weird. He's got two weird finals MVPs. He won finals MVPs on the Spurs when he was, like, the eighth best player on the team. They gave it to him. He they was the fifth. He was the fifth. But they gave it to him because he kept LeBron from scoring 70 a game. And then, they, and then he got it in Toronto when he beat – a Warriors team that was not the same Warriors team that LeBron had to fight. Are you saying year. that because they're hurt much like, uh, let's see, the Heat are? Then... But, but look at it. If you, watch, if you watch game one, if you watch game one, they was getting blitzed by 30 before Bam even oh, went yeah. out. Before, uh, before Jimmy Butler got, got hurt or whatever, they was getting whooped like that in the second quarter. Like Miami started out on a big run, and I was like, "Wait a minute, they coming, they coming for real." And then when LA kind of figured out what was going on and turned it around, the game was over with a full Miami Heat roster in there. So that's what I'm saying. But why do you? I just think I've never seen 
I've oh, never seen you. a player get hated on the way they hating on LeBron. Now they don't want LeBron to be the Finals MVP. Now it's got to be an asterisk by it and all of that. But I don't. I I I don't think. I don't think he should be the Finals MVP because I think AD should be the Finals MVP. That's just that's my opinion because it looks like AD's the most dominant player on the court right now. That's but me. I, I'm I'm fine with with AD winning MVP because he's playing like an MVP. So I'm fine with that. But I don't want to hear this narrative yeah. start like LeBron is being carried. Like they try to act like Kobe was being carried oh, when no, Shaquille O'Neal no, was no. winning Finals MVP. It's like no, Kobe wasn't being carried. Kobe was scoring over twenty points a game, and and I think in that two thousand and one season, Kobe was like at twenty seven, twenty eight points a game. Like Kobe, they wouldn't even I, they wouldn't even call Kobe and Shaq Batman and Robin because they didn't want to disrespect Kobe by calling him a Robin. They were saying Batman and Superman. I remember that. So I don't want to yeah. hear this narrative try to start up like LeBron was carried. It's been plenty of superstars I, that win championships that the other guys win finals MVPs. Larry Bird didn't win every finals MVP. I don't think Magic Johnson won every finals MVP. He might have. But, I, I might, you know who did win on. every finals MVP? Who? The GOAT. Michael Jordan. MJ. But Michael okay, Jordan. So, Okay, but who else is going to win finals MVP <laughs> on the Bulls team? Who else is going to score no, like that to win finals MVP? Nobody. Because he didn't have okay, the talent but, playing with him. He didn't have the talent playing with him that LeBron's got playing with him. But but what if, what if Jordan would have had a Shaquille O'Neal play with him? Then Shaq would have won finals MVP. You're right. What You're if right. Michael Jordan? What if Michael Jordan would have had an Anthony Davis to play with him while he was in year A seventeen? Exactly. AD would have had it. No, don't okay. get me wrong. Hey, hey, I'm not trying. I'm not yeah. trying to hate on LeBron because I, I said, I, I said this when 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 Kobe died and he re or when he retired and then he died that man I should have I shouldn't have hated on him as much. I should have appreciated him a little bit more. So I've tried not to do that with LeBron. But I think you have a lot of, especially the old heads and especially them old cats, they hate LeBron because he is more outspoken about social issues, political issues. He is more outspoken about some of that stuff than Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. You know, they asked Michael Jordan to endorse a guy back like in his home state of North Carolina and and he wouldn't even do it because he didn't want to get into the politic game. Yeah. You know, because and, I think and he saw. And which, don't get me wrong. I, I understand both ways from it because. Oh, I do I, too. I understand somebody. I understand a basketball player not wanting to get involved in political issues. I get that because it's going to hurt his bottom dollar. So I, right. mean, I get it. And what if you don't know, like me, I don't know a whole lot about politics. So what if you don't know a lot about politics and you're a superstar and they pressuring you to bash one of them? Well, wait a minute. I don't know. Right. I'm not just right. going to jump on a train just to jump on it, knowing that I got the kind of influence that I would have if I was an NBA superstar right. or something like that. And why get involved in that? You're a basketball player. But LeBron chooses to get involved, and right. LeBron is speaking for Black America. So yes. the, the fact that it's so many – Black Americans that hate on him too, but I think it's just the nostalgia. Like everybody that grew up in the '90s is extremely nostalgic. We're nostalgic about everything that happened in the '90s, and so we covet everything that we grew up with in the '90s. Mm -hmm. And I think that Michael Jordan just represents that era, and yeah. I think that people are so attached to it that anybody that opposes his throne, people hate on. They done yeah, Kobe yeah. like that. They hate on LeBron now because LeBron the topic yeah. of conversation. I think they hate on LeBron a little bit more than they hate on Kobe because at least they didn't hate on Kobe's game. They hated well, on and, Kobe, but they knew they couldn't hate on his game. They even hate on LeBron's game sometimes. Game, yeah. Acting like LeBron ain't clutch when LeBron got like 6,200 um, uh, playoff buzzer beaters. Like, get out of here, bro. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and another thing, I think it rubs people the wrong way that he got drafted to Cleveland. He left and went to Miami. Then he goes back to Cleveland. Then he leaves again and goes to L.A. I think that rubs people the wrong way, too, because you see 
Michael Jordan never left the Bulls. Kobe, you know, until late in his career when it was over. Um, then you had uh, you, you had Kobe who never left the Lakers. Then you got Magic Johnson who, I mean, he never left the Lakers. Lay Bird never left the, you know, Boston Celtics. So I think a lot of that moving teams has rubbed people the wrong way. Um, but I, I really do feel like in my heart when – when what's her name told you know said he should just shut up and dribble and he come back out with you know he fired back and 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 started speaking up for Black Lives Matter and that rubbed people a, a lot the wrong way but I don't understand I don't see how you can hate on his game he is so talented and to be doing this what seventeen years straight now yeah. 17 years straight to play at the level he plays. I mean, it shows I don't, you I don't one, think people, how well I, it took how well he took care of his body, and two, what kind of physical specimen he is. I don't think people truly understand what he's doing. I don't think people understand that in year 17, it's not normal for people to still be playing like this. I don't think people get it. I think people get numb to greatness. I think they do the same thing with Drake. I think they do the same thing with Jay-Z. I think they do the same thing with a lot of these people that's just been great. I think they do it with Tom Brady. They do it with people that's been great for so long. It's like, oh, it's just LeBron putting up another 30-point triple-double. That's what he does. No, he's 35 years old. He's been playing in the league 17 seasons. He's been to 10 finals. That means he's playing the extent of the games. And half the time, he's going to a game seven in the finals. So he he's playing the extent of his as of as far as an NBA season could possibly yeah. go, and he's doing with the it year in and year what, out. With the exception of this year, where he had this long break, had he yeah. have had, had this weird year hadn't happened, and they yeah. had to do. I mean, he would have done the same thing again. Yeah, uh, people, Alias, what do you say, man? What do you think, um, Juice? I think it's because he a threat on and off the court. A threat on the court. Uh, to Michael Jordan, who they hold high and high regard, uh, that he can actually overtake that GOAT status. So everybody from the old school holding on to that nostalgia, like 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 a Skip Bayless, it could be the same thing that Mike did, that LeBron did, and you could point out every single thing LeBron didn't do. But it could, Mike could have did the same thing, like got swept, but it's an excuse. Yeah. So I believe that he's a threat on the court and off the court. Off the court being him making all these big – decisions that people usually make for people like yeah. him picking up his stuff and going to Miami. They hated that because usually it's a white owner trading these guys to another team rather than a black man taking his own destiny in his own hands. Yeah. And what LeBron did, he created player mobility. So now yeah. these guys kind of take their careers in their yeah. own hands and they'll move cities on your ass. If yeah. stuff's not right, you, yeah. can't, you can't have step with him no more. They will leave. You in the dust. Yeah. So yeah. I believe being a threat on and off the court. And I don't see how you can hate on him. Some of the stuff that he does, like opening a school, the charity work, even yeah. the, even the decision. A lot of people don't talk about him raising, I think it was like $45 million for the Boys and Girls Club that yeah. night on a decision rather than him actually going to Miami. So it's a lot of hate yeah. that I don't understand. And I think that they'll probably appreciate him when he walk away. Kind of like Kobe. If you remember Kobe, Kobe, it you know they didn't love Kobe like this. I, I remember know. being a Kobe fan just because he was like Mike. They hated Kobe. But I know. I know. I threw so Kobe much shade. Yeah. I threw so much shade, and I I used to text you all the time and call you all the time, trashing Kobe. You know, I know I personally done that. So I and I think I mean they made a commercial about everybody hating him and him embracing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? That, that made I, him who he was. I, so. Those were extremely valid points, Juicy, about it being uh, LeBron being a threat on the court and he's a threat off the court. And, uh, again, to piggyback on what Kendall was saying, too, I do think it's got something to do with how outspoken he is. LeBron is really like, you know when the Joker was sitting down with Batman and he was like, um, you've changed things forever. Like when the Joker said that to Batman that during the interrogation scene in the Dark Knight, and he was like, "You've changed things forever." Yeah. That's what LeBron represents that change, and it bugs people. I don't think people were ready to see a bl young black man 
going against the grain and taking their careers into their hands. And like you said, taking their, their destinies into their own hands, taking it out of the hands of the, the owners, you know, and, and doing their own thing. I don't think people were ready to see that when they did. And with LeBron, you know, with a lot of people, that's the first to do something. It's always going to be backlash like that. It's exactly. all because they're the first to do it. Yeah. But he knocked yeah. down those doors. What Jay-Z said, yeah. Hope did that. So hopefully you won't have to go through that. Yeah. LeBron knocked down those doors. Now all these players got player mobility now. Exactly. So all of these players can do it. But I don't think people were ready to see. And I know people will deny it, but a lot of that stuff will go on in your subconscious. And I think people had an issue with seeing young black men take their careers into their own hands and say, nah. No, we ain't got to sit around and wait for them to make decisions of, of, for, for us and what we're going to yeah. do for our career. We're going to do it ourselves. Yeah, I'm going to go play with my homeboys in South Beach. Yeah. Uh, he's also in an era where social media and camera phones and everything. So, like, his whole, I mean, you know, the stuff with, I mean, it, like, like his kids, like, like, you know, you didn't have social media. If, if Michael Jordan had social media, you would have seen how much he gambled how much he was golfing, how much he was smoking cigars and running around with women. You would have seen way more of that because he could hide it because there wasn't – you 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 didn't have a camera at your fingertips. Uh, yeah. Kobe for a little bit, the, the, the technology wasn't there. You know, I mean, they could have got a lot more hate had they yeah. had social media. Yeah. I mean, you know, but, but now we're just – we're also in an era where people just want to hate on people for just they who do. they are. We just, it is. it is. It's who they've at, always been. We just there. can see it now. It's who they've always been. We just can see it now. And if you really think about it, you go back and watch the last dance. After that 93 finals against the Suns, even back then, with that limited access that paparazzi and photographers and media and stuff had, even back then, it was too much for Michael. That's why he stepped back after the 93 season. Because they had started coming down on him about the gambling and about stuff like that and being the unfortunate and events. And about his father. I mean, you know. His father. The they unfortunate were, events happened with his father. And I mean, it they was, were, it was they were too much to for his Mike. Father, his father got killed by people that he owed. I, I mean, you know, nah, that like. Didn't happen. That didn't happen. I don't think that's what the reason was. I think that's what they were saying. Yeah. But I don't think that's, that's no, why. no. I'm not saying that either. I'm saying they were saying. I mean, they were trying to act like his father got killed because of yeah. of, of, of his a gambling addiction. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he caught a lot of heat. He had to back away. He had to but take what a I, break. But, but what I'm saying is, he caught that heat. Michael had been praised his whole career. He caught that heat for about one year. And he couldn't handle it no more. He had to step away. LeBron then caught this kind of heat his entire career. And and LeBron's still going. So I think not only the physical uh, part of playing this long and being this great for this long, but also the mental wear and tear. He's been able to sustain this level of play through all of that. I think it goes so unnoticed. I think he's the most hated on superstar of all time. But I guess he get an equal amount of love, if not more. But we see a lot of the hate, too. And it's like, uh, I don't know. Y'all just seem a little nostalgic to me and don't want to admit. Because to me, That's I think LeBron the GOAT. And Kobe, my favorite player. And I grew up a Michael Jordan fan like everybody else did in the 90s. But the stuff that we done seen LeBron do, man, I mean, we done seen LeBron take teams that just had good NBA players. LeBron has proved in, proven in his career that he can take a team – with nothing but good NBA players, and he can at least get to the finals. And then they bump into a team with about three guys and, you know, three superstars, and he gets overwhelmed and stuff like that. But yeah. LeBron can take teams with only good players and go to the MJ finals. Took with a team I don't with think only MJ can do that. Too. I don't and think Mike can do that. won six with only good players. Uh, Scottie Pippen, top 50. Dennis Rodman, uh, Dennis Rodman, a Hall of Famer, best rebounder, low post. Now, we're not talking era. about Hall of Famers now. If we're going to talk about Hall of Famers, then LeBron's had his fair share of Hall of Famers. Yeah, but, but I mean, that's talking just about me because I'm going to argue with you because I love MJ so much. But I'm not going to – I've already made up my mind when the whole Kobe era ended and, and then he died. Like, I'm not going to – I'm not going to spend my time hating on something yeah, that yeah. is just – I mean, it blows my mind how good – 
LeBron but see, has been for so long. But see, when you talk about the Hall of Famers, you're also talking about LeBron is playing in an era where you needed two or three Hall of Famers. Oh, yeah. yeah. On your team yeah. Oh, I know it's a different Because area. the opposite, the, other, the opposing team got two or three Hall of Famers, too. And so you got to match their energy with your mm – -hmm. that's why he had to go to Miami and get two of his boys because Boston yeah. got three of them. And Boston yeah. beating you every year with KG, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce. And you got Delonte mm -hmm. West and Mo Williams. Well, those are good, Child, let me stay good right players. Here. Let me stay right there. Uh, you bring up Paul Pierce. Why do you think Paul Pierce hates LeBron so much? Because every chance that he get on TV, he try to negate and take away from what this boy doing. Why do you think he hate LeBron so much? Is he jealous? And Kyrie too. Let's let's you know the headlines with Kyrie saying that he he yeah. finally got somebody that'll knock that shot down down the stretch. Let's stay right here for a minute. Why do you think Paul Pierce hates on him so much, and why do you think Kyrie hates on him so much? Paul Pierce is 100% jealousy. Kyrie is probably 90% jealousy. Well, uh, I think a part of Kyrie was just sitting there talking with his homeboy and wasn't even thinking about what was going on around him. Mm -hmm. I think that was about 10% of it. 90% is he's been jealous of LeBron ever since LeBron got to Cleveland because he thought that the Cavs was going to be his team and his franchise. He had no idea that LeBron was going to pop up and it's the LeBron show. And I think he's been jealous of him ever since. Paul Pierce been jealous of him since he was a rookie because Paul Pierce was supposed to be the small forward in the league at that time, yeah. even though he never was really in that top five conversation for real, even in his best days, I don't remember us putting Paul Pierce in that top five. He was a great player, a Hall of Fame player, yeah. but he's not that guy. And when LeBron came into the league, it's like, who this new kid? Oh, this new kid is the, new, the next Michael Jordan. That's why. And you will never be that good. Even though you are a Hall of Famer, and a great player in your own right, but he's been jealous of LeBron ever since LeBron came into the league. He's Paul always Pierce been is just jealous. He's a bitter of old man. He's a bitter old man. Yeah. But I don't understand why, because he act like LeBron took his lane. Bro, that wasn't your lane. You never yeah, were in that lane. lane. No. You never were in that lane. You were <laughs> a great player, but you weren't ever in that lane. Come on, you wasn't that guy. And And, like... When some of these former players, they talk about Paul Pierce, for instance, what he didn't do and what he couldn't, what LeBron don't do and what he can't do. What did you do? What did you yeah. do prior to teaming up with Ray Allen and KG? What did you do post? Because LeBron broke y'all up. And then y'all went to Brooklyn and he broke that shit up too. So, like, broke it up again. at a certain point, you got to give people their credit. I understand if you're still playing. If you notice Kobe started giving it up, you know, yeah. he retired when he talked about the, the battles that he had in the past. But yeah. these guys are just so fucking jealous of him. Even yeah, they jealous of him. Kyrie, what did you do pre-LeBron? What did you do post-LeBron? Nothing. You stay healthy and you you getting that T.O. Um, kind of reputation where you a team of obliterator. You know yep. what I mean? Like, you know, these teams, are, the team chemistry is better without you. You know, he's a yep. hell of a ball player. Don't get me wrong. And yeah. I just think, you know, he could be a cancer to some teams at this point. So. And, I mean, Kyrie, even when Kyrie is playing, as brilliant, as brilliant of a basketball player as he is, and Kyrie is an absolutely magician with the basketball in his hand. This ain't taken away. And I like Kyrie, but he is jealous of LeBron. And even when Kyrie is on the court, he can be a chemistry buster. Mm -hmm. Even when he's on the court. Kyrie don't make nobody better. He's just an unbelievable one-on-one -on -one player. But Kyrie don't make no teammates better. Yeah. You know, I remember when he was hey, in Cleveland. Kyrie, Kyrie used to come in there and completely stop the rotation of the ball. You know, what you Kyrie was, that's why LeBron could never take a seat. Because when LeBron sat down, the ball was gonna stop moving. What the you know? What you think about his statement finally having somebody that can hit that shot, that big shot when he looked down the court? Well, it still don't make no statement. sense because he was there when LeBron hit bu uh, buzzer beater. He was there when LeBron hit the buzzer beater in Chicago, and he went jumping all over him like a little boy. Like, come on, if what are you talking about? If it wasn't for LeBron, he wouldn't have that ring. No. You know, I and I, I, really, I, don't, I don't understand – I don't understand Kyrie's hatred. I, I don't understand why he hates on LeBron. 
I really don't. I guess maybe because he all of a sudden wasn't the man in Cleveland no more. That's why. That's what it is. Kyrie but, got. But here's Kyrie my thing: like, you're, you're, you're not gonna be the man in Brooklyn. He's not gonna be the man in Brooklyn. You got yeah. KD. Yeah. Well, KD. What I will say, KD. KD has stepped back to a default, like he did with uh, Russell Westbrook. And I think yeah. that's what he going to do in, in Brooklyn. Instead of him being that – he need to be that that guy. And he's yeah. willing to kind of step back and defer to people he don't need to defer to. I could see if it was like an Anthony Davis, uh, a Giannis, someone, somebody like that, that he could step back and actually defer to. But, but he Kyrie, stepped back and deferred to Steph Curry. And I can't stand Steph I, – I, I can't stand Steph Curry. But Steph deferred to, the, to KD. They made him – I think, I think I, Steph – Steph I, you know, I've been saying for years that I will never in my life understand why Steph Curry gave up the prime of his career when he won two MVPs in a row, a championship, and the first ever unanimous MVP. I will never in my life understand why he gave up the prime of his career for Kevin Durant. I never get it. I never get it. Do you realize yes, that we that could only, have had that what that only that only gave him how many more championships? Two. two. It gave him two. It gave him I'm just two. Saying, did, did, he didn't win one without KD. Yeah, he won. they won the first one without KD. But the right, Cavs that's what I'm have, saying. The Cavs didn't have Kyrie or a love, so, but he still won. And then he got he got what two more after that? Mm -hmm. Two he's more. He's got yeah. three all. He's got three all together, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he could have got he could have got a couple more without KD. In I, my think opinion. He I think he would have got at least it. one more. Yeah, they would have competed. You know, State probably still would have won, but Kevin Durant was that cheat code. But I personally think LeBron figured it out, and I think that's why they went. That's why they went and got you know, yeah. you know Durant. So I think because they beat them three times in a row. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they beat them. It could have been a sweep. I mean, they beat them three times straight. Uh, LeBron kind of figured it out, and I think LeBron and Kyrie just said, you know what, they can't guard us, so whatever. <laughs> so they just, oh. Uh, Ended up coming back, winning three straight and winning the series. And I think Golden State was like, all right, he figured us out. We got to go get the cheat code. So they went and got the cheat code. That's what I call that Warriors team, the cheat code Warriors. But all of them guys jealous of LeBron, though. KD kept Kevin Durant jealous of him. Yeah, I don't know. It, it really don't make a lot of sense. It, it, it don't. But, I mean, I get it. I, I get it. I, I mean, Juicy said it perfect. He's a threat on the court. He's a threat off the court. And a lot of people don't like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and then you said it perfectly, too. You got 90s people. They don't let – nobody's going to be, you know. I personally know I hated on Kobe way more than I ever hated on LeBron. And yeah. that was because he was taking over my, you know, my king's throne, you know. Yeah. So, you know. Well, Kobe, Kobe will always be my favorite player. LeBron is not my favorite player, contrary to popular belief. I wind up having to defend him because I get tired of these old dudes hating on him so much all the time. But to be honest with you, but honestly, LeBron is not my favorite player. He never has been. Kobe's my favorite player. But I think if, LeBron is unbelievable. Rashad, if you're not sleeping or at work, I feel like you're on Facebook defending the world against LeBron. <laughs> or defending <laughs> LeBron against the world. Yeah, yeah, defending LeBron. Yeah, that's what I meant yeah. to say. I got more. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, moving on to our next topic, uh, I want to briefly touch on uh, the hiring, the hiring of Doc Rivers and uh, and and. Uh, Doc. Uh, I re I really wanted to talk about this because me and Shaw was having a conversation. Is Doc um, overrated or underrated or just rated? You know, can he win the East? That is the question I want to pose to you guys. Do, do he have a realistic chance of winning the East? And is if he makes the NBA Finals, is that a success? Yes, that would be a success. I don't think he's going to do it. I don't, I don't understand how he gets really good jobs. He keep. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Hey, I I feel the same way that y'all kind of feel about it. I'm I'm rooting for it. You know, sue me. I'm rooting for everybody that's black. <laughs> I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for Doc, but. How does this man keep on getting these decent? I mean, not decent, really good jobs. And I he, think he, that 
I think that, that off of that one championship, off of that one championship. Well, you also got to you got to you got to think about it too. Doc Rivers has been around in the NBA for a, a long, long time. Doc Rivers got a lot of connections inside the NBA. Uh, all of those people know how how good of a basketball mind Doc Rivers has got. Now, I think that Doc Rivers has underachieved with a lot of the talent that he's had. So, I mean, I guess you could call him a, a wee bit overrated maybe, but I'm pulling for Doc because, you know, I want to see a black coach win an NBA championship. So I'm pulling, I'm pulling for Doc Rivers. But, I mean, Doc has had a lot of talent this decade and not really got anything to show for it at all. You had Lob City. You had Kawhi and Paul <laughs> George. I mean, and now with Philly. So, I mean, the question you ask him, is it a success if he gets to the finals? I think it would be. Yes, it would be a success. But I'm but, – I don't understand Kendall. that hire because Kendall. the players that he's got Kendall. in Philadelphia, those hey, guys. Hey, Kendall. They need Kendall. to be Kendall. developed. Kendall, something wrong with your, vo- your phone. Your, um, your bandwidth is uh, not yeah. cooperating. So, um, yeah, it's been doing that the whole time. But that is yeah. really choppy right now. Um, is it a success shot while Kimball get his, his uh, shiggity working back again? Uh, I, it's a hard call because I don't know if it's a success. I, I guess for Philadelphia, it's a success because they, they they aren't a finals team. They don't go to the finals. They hadn't been to the finals since 2001. Um, so I guess you could say it was a success, but at the end of the day, how is that? much different from what he's been doing for a long time. He's been getting the Eastern Conference Finals. He's been getting to, to uh, championships and losing. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that you hire a Doc Rivers to win it. I, I think that's. I think you hire a Doc Rivers to win the championship. Now, I don't know if he can do that because um, you still got a point guard. You got a point guard that can't shoot. He's a phenomenal talent, but he can't shoot. So... You got a big man in in Embiid who, you know, got the talent to be the best big man in the league. But you know, he kind of get hurt and stuff like that. And so I I don't know. I feel like they need another guy uh, that's more of a consistent wing scorer. So I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get to the finals with that squad. And I don't know if it's a success to get to the finals with that squad. I think you hire a Doc Rivers if you got him on an elite. If you got him on an elite plateau, then I think you hire him to win it. See, well, what was those franchises that hired Doc doing before they hired him? So, do we care about the Clippers before Doc got there? Do we remember what Boston was doing before Doc get, got there? Not, not the old school glory days Boston, but currently while Paul Pierce was there, what were they doing? You know Nothing. what I mean? Nothing. Even though that old, the Orlando teams that he had, you yeah. know, he had Tracy McGrady. You know, uh, he blew a three-one lead. But what was those cha- uh, what was those franchises doing before Doc got there? So, yeah. he, I guess he can over. I mean, I guess he can underachieve and be a tad bit overrated, or he could just be rated. I mean, when he finally got talent, he did go to the plateau with that Boston team, and he got yeah. he lost to Kobe Bryant the second time. So. I think he can win win the East, not the finals. But I think making it to the finals can be a success with Philly considering they hadn't been since 2001. Yeah. You, know, you could be knocking on the door and knocking on the door, but if you can't get that, it's no good. You know what I mean? It's teams that will kill to get in the NBA finals. If you get there, you have a shot. You got a shot. You got to get there first. That Toronto team, LeBron kept – Kept them out year after year after year. He left. They finally got there, got a shot, and won. You never know what might have happened. Injury, yeah. you know, you never know. And, you know, Toronto won. So, yeah. I, I feel like he got a shot. And in the East, other than who who, who, who should he be scared of coach-wise? I mean, Spo, yeah, Spo is a damn good coach, but it's been seven years since he made it to the finals. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it ain't like he's ch- checking it out year after year. So, 
I think it'll be a success, and I think he can actually do it with that quad that he got. You need to add a shooter too, but I think they can do it. Hey, I hope you're right. I, I hope he – I want to see him win. I don't want to see him beat LeBron or beat my Lakers or nothing like that, but I do want to see him win. Hey, I want to see him beat I'm LeBron and Black, so your Lakers. I like Doc, so – I like Doc. I, I So, I mean, I, I, I also recognize the, the flaws and what's happened because also at those franchises – that, that we give him credit for turning around. They also added really good players, too. Because in Boston, they added Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen. And then you get to the Clippers, where you add Chris Paul and you add prime Blake Griffin. And that and then, goes back to those relationships he probably had with a lot of those yeah. players that won't come yeah. there. So don't think Doc coming there by himself. He's going to bring a couple of guys, you know. And the East is a little bit weaker than the West. You know what I mean? He's been over there. Yeah, now, a whole lot weaker. Okay, okay now. Okay. So – Doc got the relationships. So so if he's bringing the talent there and the talent gets him to the second round, ain't Doc supposed to be that that, equal, that extra push to get them to where they need to go? If the, if the great players, if he, if okay, I'm going to give him that. If he's bringing the great players there, bring, bringing the talent there, the talent will get you to the first or second round. Now, you know, where do you it's fall in? Do what do. You know, the year yeah, before. Where do you fall the, in? The yeah. year before. Okay, so, like, last year, which, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because Kawhi, Kawhi and Toronto won it last year. Kawhi and Toronto almost didn't make it. Philadelphia gave them all they could handle. And it came down to that last second shot. Yeah. I mean, Philadelphia gave them all they could handle and about got, I mean, about, about beat the Toronto Raptors who eventually, you know, went on to the, you know, went on to the ship and won it. So yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I Hopefully I've fixed the issue. I'm sorry. I was so choppy. I was trying to make a point is I didn't understand the hire because we talked about this before. It doesn't seem like he develops those players. He doesn't get them – he doesn't – they don't take that next step that they need to take. His championship, I thought, had, was players that were already established and already developed. That, that, was, hey, that, was, my, that was my whole argument. But I am – I'm rooting for Doc. I, I, I like Doc. I, I, I want to see Doc succeed. Um, I, I think it's good for the game of basketball. It's especially good for <laughs> – for, you know, black coaches, if, if if when black coaches win championships, and I'm not a Lakers fan, so I could care less uh, if he beats LeBron in the Lakers. You know, uh, the only time I'm gonna root against Doc if he makes it in the finals is if he is playing the Spurs, which I I don't think we're gonna be there anytime soon. I, when the next time you think we're gonna see the the Spurs? I I, I, I honestly I've had this I've had this hard yeah, tough discussion. With Rashad, I think it is time for us and Pop to to part ways. I don't. I don't. Pop is not. He hadn't adapted. It, you know, he hadn't. He hadn't adapted to this style of basketball to the style that's winning now. Uh, you know, we've agree. seen this think... with the. You've seen this with the Alabama dynasty. Nick Saban had to had to adapt and 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 form into form his teams into what was winning. You know, he couldn't just play defense and pound the ball. He had to go find wide receivers. He had to air it out. He had to play up tempo. That, he had to find smaller, faster defenses. Yeah, but you um, still got to have superstars. But we'll, we'll touch on that. You got to have superstars. Those superstars do not want to play for a coach like Popovich. You never know. You know, Kawhi Leonard was as good as they come, and – when he talked and said he didn't think he was giving his all and he thought he was healthy enough to play, but the young man was looking out, got a second opinion, because let's be honest, those doctors in the NBA, you've seen what happened to KD, you, you've seen Clay, they're going to put you back on the court. They're, they're basically work comp docs where they're going to put a Band-Aid over the issue and send you back as quick as they can because that's what they're paid to do. And – Kawhi wasn't ready. He knew his body wasn't ready to go and give 100%, and Pop calls him out. Pop, you know, questioned his loyalty, and, and what does he do? He gets on out of there. Those superstars, I, I mean, I think if we hadn't had Popovich and we might have had somebody else, 
we might have a shot at get, getting LeBron. But LeBron was not going to go to the Spurs with Popovich being the head coach. And, and they're, they're not these superstars. His style of basketball. I don't know, though. I don't style. know. I don't know. LeBron and Popovich got a lot of respect for each other. They, they didn't each other. They didn't met each other a lot of times in the finals. I, I, I think that would have been the perfect scenario for LeBron to step into. When LeBron left Miami and went to Cleveland, I thought it would have made uh, – uh, uh, no, 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 no. When, Le, when LeBron was leaving Cleveland for the second time yeah. before he got back to L.A., I kept yeah. saying, I think he should go to San Antonio because Pop going to manage his minutes. Pop, Pop going to get him great shooters, great role players. He can play within a system. He can find his minutes within the game. Uh, Pop would get, put him on a little management and stuff like that. I think it would have been the perfect place for him to go out. But he chose to go another route, and I'm glad because I'm a Laker fan. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know when we're gonna see. I, I don't know. I, I really, I'm really to that point, and and I know I sound like somebody. I sound like somebody from this generation that's talking about what have you done for me lately, and I'm not, and it doesn't sound like I appreciate what Pop has done and the the dynasty that he had, and. I mean, he had superstars there. You know, Tim Duncan was one of the all-time greats. David Robinson was an all-time – one of the all-time best centers. Uh, we had Tony Parker and Ginobili. And, uh, you know, we had Kawhi and, you know, Robert. Or we've had great players. We've had good players. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just I just think that Pop's – Pop's style is just not what – it's not what the superstars are into right now. Yeah, but – And then, you know, I and I, I don't know. Oh, that remains to be seen. But um, uh, any final thoughts on Doc? Uh, I'm pulling for him. I, I want him to win. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna have to bring some pieces in. I don't, I don't, I don't know if he could get. I don't know what the team they got if they could get to the. If they could, they might could get to the finals. But I don't know. They're they're gonna have to get him a little bit more help. So you know, I'm interested to see. I'm like Rashad, though. I, I I hope he succeeds. I hope he does well. Doc's a great human being. He's a great human being. X's and O's wise, he's a great coach. I mean, he he's a good person. So I I hope he has success. All right, well, moving on to our last topic, uh, Kendall. I'm gonna let you introduce this topic. Bring it on in, buddy. All right. So um. We all three know what this country is dealing with, uh, the social issues, a pandemic, um, stuff that I've never seen before. I've never seen so many people hate each other. I, I, the, way the, 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 the way that America is just hating each other. And we have two guys – that we're told as Americans and the people that have the right to vote that we can vote on. You got two candidates. Those are the people you got to vote on. And if you watched that debate this past week, you, I don't care what side of the fence, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a, a Republican, you cannot, if you have a brain, you cannot say that either one of those candidates were good. That was absolutely embarrassing as an American. It was it was just embarrassing. It was it was two clowns. I mean, they were acting like stooges. They 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 acted like they were just drunk old men rambling on at a nursing home. I mean, it was <laughs> horrible. It was it was so pitiful. It was embarrassing to see. I mean, other countries have got to be laughing at what's going on with our country because our country's trying to kill each other. We're not even – it's not somebody else that, that's trying to come in to kill us or bomb us or take take our freedom away. We're doing, a, we're doing a damn good job of doing it ourselves because we can't get along. Never have I seen if you have this opinion and you have that opinion, you automatically hate that person for, for being a Republican or for being a Democrat. We're we're starting to uh, we're we're starting to get on the we're 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 hating each other because you're black and I'm white because you're rich and I'm poor, and, and I, guys, 
neither one of those people and whoever's listening to this, neither one of those guys are going to fix the issues that are going on in America. I'm, I understand where you're coming from. Me, I'm, uh, it's difficult to me when it comes to politics because I, I don't want to act like I sit up and keep up with politics 24-7 because I don't. Uh, I did watch the debate the other day. I thought it was comical. But I also, I remember the first time I went and watched The Dark Knight. Um, and everybody that knows me knows that Behind the Lion King, The Dark Knight is my favorite movie of all time. But I can remember being in the movie theaters watching The Dark Knight. The Joker was so good. Heath Ledger was portraying him so good. And it was such a new, fresh take on the role that it genuinely scared me while I was in the movies. Because I was like, this could be real life. I had that same feeling when I was watching the debate the other day. I watched it and I was like, this is real life. This is actually happening. And so I, I watched the debate. It was comical, but it shouldn't be comical. It wasn't supposed to be comical. It's supposed to be, this is definitely the worst year that I've personally seen. We didn't need a comical debate. We needed a debate with some with two people giving positive and good solutions to what's going on in this country right now. And we just didn't get it. I don't think we, we, we got that. I think that the people, like you were saying earlier, the people that were voting for either person probably didn't have a change of heart by watching that. But the people that's on the fence still have absolutely no clue who they're going with. Absolutely. Because I don't think they won anybody over with anything that was happening. No, you know? I so, I don't know. We'll, uh, I, we'll, see, we'll, I, we'll see what happens. It was pitiful. I mean, that is yeah, pitiful. That all these millions of people and those are the two best people that we that 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 we have that you can find to, to to lead this country, which is a great country. I still believe we're a great country, and I, I just it is sad that it's sad that it has come to this. I what you think, Juice? I mean, it's pitiful. Mm, I mean. I hope they like, I don't know, surrogates for the people who really Because if it's these two people, I hope it's really Kamala Harris or the Obamas really running it behind Joe rather than Joe. Um, it looked like it's Pence and other, you know, other people running it if Trump and uh, Because if it's these two guys, it made me don't even want to vote, to be honest with you. I mean, I know mean, a lot of people that feel the way that I feel about even getting up and going, you know, to vote. I mean, you really don't care because these are the two options that we have. But, and, and and here's the thing, like, not to cut you off, but here's the thing. You did. When, you know, when we, <laughs> I, I know I'm cutting I'm you off. And I don't I'm, just, I'm just messing with you, man. I'm just messing with you. I, I know. It, it just, it's sad because the issues that we're, fa we're facing, social injustice issues. We're on the brink of another civil war of, of a white versus black war almost. And, and, and and to see people getting trampled on because of their skin color still in 2020, and the it, that's an issue that needs to be fixed. That I think that only the the it, we're, we're being told that it it's sad because if you want to change, here's the thing: when when when, when the Black Lives Matter, get out and vote. We're pushing people get out and vote, register, vote. This is how we're going to beat this social. The, the social injustice we're gonna we're gonna beat this we're gonna beat this if you'll get out and vote but then you get these two clowns and you're telling me if i get out and vote for either one of these it's gonna fix the 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 the, the stuff that's going on and i'm and, and looking at that that them two are not gonna fix anything it doesn't matter if biden gets in it doesn't matter if trump gets in Trump's already in, you see what's going on i don't think biden you know i'm like you juicy maybe if somebody behind biden's running the show maybe some of the issues get fixed but if it's up to i mean if it's up to joe then you know i mean he's doing good just to stay alive i mean <laughs> it's, it is so sad and comical it's it's sad man I, I i just we're facing some tough issues from some hard issues some some very bad I just, issues I, I just hope that I, I try to remain uh, hopeful. I, I hope that maybe the next debate is a, is a better debate. I, I do pray for President Trump. You know, he, um, 
got COVID-19 right now. I don't want to see nothing happen to the man. I'm not a Trump fan by, by like, no, no. Quarantine? No. No, quarantine? Yeah, I don't follow no rules. Well, all the directions, remember? <laughs> what I will say to lighten the mood. But I don't want to see nothing happen to him either. You know, I don't want to see nothing happen. Yeah, to most him. definitely, because you're a human, you're higher nothing. human being, but yeah. Yeah. The material that we didn't we didn't got from this shit is oh, a a go lighten up the mood. It this is Saturday gold. Night Live with it Alec Baldwin and Jim Carrey. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it was a masterpiece. I mean, Saturday Night but, Live hadn't been that good in decades. You know, that's how good they were. The, I get I get this worked up when I saw that I got this worked up and it stuck in my crawl. But at the same time. Me and you, you know, we we have had discussions behind closed doors, and we've talked about it. Let's be real, man. Poli- it don't matter. No, them politics don't care about us. You know, I've said that from day one. So it it didn't matter if that would have been a good debate. They still don't care about us. They still don't care about some of the issues that lower Americans are facing. Obviously, they don't care about the issues that black Americans are facing, or it would have been fixed a long time ago. Yeah. So my thing is, my thing is, I just don't like the fact that you're telling a whole generation, you're telling young people in a generation and you're trying to tell and, you, and you're preaching to black people that, hey, the way we're going to get change or the, the difference is you got to get out and vote and vote and vote. And it's like, man, have you seen the candidate they're asking you to vote for? He's no better than the candidate that's in there. Yeah. And, 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 and so that that's why I say, and we have talked about this. Change starts with people like me and you that are willing to have tough discussions, that are actually decent human beings, that go out and bust our rear ends and raise our kids the right way. That That's where change is going to come, is it's going to come from the people who really care about this country, who want to see the best for this country, and they raise their kids the right way. They, they, they don't, they don't buy, they don't, they don't put, they, they don't buy into this bull crap that they try to sell you uh, uh, from the pop political standpoint. It, it, it starts, change starts with people like me and you, people like good people that my wife work with, you know, that that's who ask us. They, we are getting a lot of love from the people over there that, that work at children's hospital with my wife. And they asked me, you know, they asked me to, to talk about this subject because they wanted to hear your views too. You know, they, they respect us a lot. And, and, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. Um, but change starts with people like me and y'all and the people that watch this and the people that listen, we've got to do a better job of raising our kids the right way because racism is taught. And if we can do that, then, and we can remain hopeful, like Rashad said, and we can put our faith and trust in, 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 in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then I think and I believe and I remain hopeful that, that we can make a change. We can make a difference. Well, that's well, well, well said and well put. Um, yeah, um, all we can do is pray. And uh, what I want to do is to remain silly because I'm silly as hell. <laughs> the Supreme Dream skit. <laughs> If you got a chance, go look up the Supreme Dream skit <laughs> right after the debate when he acted like all the different they had all the different countries on the phone. If you hadn't seen that, please, oh, I hadn't seen it. I hadn't oh, seen please it. go look that up. Yeah, the material that came from this. I know it's dark and all that good stuff, but you know, social media got a way of lighting up the mood. They do. Yeah, they do. to the yeah. last thing as we do because we've been doing this for a while now. We need we need to be wrapping it up uh, as we do every episode. We want to leave the people with a movie, a series, um, you know, an album, a song that you guys been listening to, starring with you, Ray Shaw. Um, this week I've been on a Lord of the Rings phase. So, oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> nerd actually, alert! I, I was actually watching it right before we uh, right before we started recording. Lord of the Rings: The Fellowship of the Ring is definitely in my top five uh, movies. So. Um, that's what I suggest. What about music wise? Music wise, I've been listening to that old Drake. Nothing was the same. That's what I've been listening. To. I've been in that vibe. I get in a Drake vibe, man. It, it look ain't no vibe like old Drake vibe. I'm talking about 
2009 to 2013 Drake that that's that uh so far gone thank mm -hmm. me later take care and nothing was the same Drake it ain't no Drake like that it ain't no vibe that you can get into that's that's better than that vibe you get in that old Drake vibe man so I've been on that old nothing was the same 2013 Drake okay what about you Kendall Ah, yeah. if you got a Netflix, check out uh, the uh, the 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 uh, the documentary they done on the Challenger, uh, the space the space shuttle that blew up. Mm. Uh, uh, that was really good. I mean, I, I I like some of the NASA stuff. I like it. I I sit and watched it. I remember, I remember growing up being young. I remember my mom and dad talking about it because it happened the January before. It happened in '86. Happened on January. Uh, I can't remember the date, but it happened in January, and I was born there in February. But uh, you know, um, it was crazy. It was sad. Um, it was just. I, I thought it. I thought it was good. Uh, it was just kind of. Uh, once again, the government done some sketchy stuff, as we're finding out little by little. They are sketchy and don't care about the people. You what know? would be worse? Flown through space. Do what now? Oxygen. <laughs> After your space shuttle blew up, you didn't somehow miraculously survive, but you have enough oxygen to last you like two weeks. Or being in the bottom of the ocean with oxygen with an impenetrable suit. <laughs> I, I, one of my biggest fears, I, I mean, it's a big fear of mine to drown. And, you know, I have never jumped high enough or been high enough to even eclipse what space might be. So, I one of my biggest fear though is like drowning in the ocean. Like, no, nah, I'm just saying, having just a good time. Pool. Which one is I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't have this conversation? <laughs> that's why I'm laughing. I mean, that's like, like saying, dri what would drifting you off do? in the. I don't think there is a terror. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there will ever be a terror like drifting off in the space. Because you're going to see some stuff that you thought was just in comic books. <laughs> this is true. This, I'm not you giving gonna, it a lot of thought. At some point, you're going to bump into Xandar, or you're going to bump in the, <laughs> or you're going to bump into Cybertron, and your problems have only begun. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I would think you would be more hopeful drifting off into space because maybe you find like a cool spaceship that wants to like take you in and you know no you gonna find you a spaceship and they gonna eat you <laughs> <laughs> that's what you gonna find uh, all right what i'm oh and then oh, i guess because uh, we gotta wrap it up music wise uh, yeah uh music wise i've been on some uh <laughs> i've been on a country kick here fellas i've been uh, oh, listening God. to some Chris Stapleton, Morgan Wallen, uh, Luke Combs. Uh, I, I, I've been, you know, John Party. I've been, I've been really killing some country lately, <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been on. If, if you got to check out Chris, Chris Stapleton. You, if, Chris Stapleton, that Traveler CD. It is, man, it is I a I got that album, thing. and I don't, I don't listen to country, but I yeah. got that Chris Stapleton yeah. album. He dope. So, you know, that's what I've been on. So what about you, Juice? Uh, I I watched what I'm gonna recommend for the people is a movie on Netflix that I just watched, uh, The Devil All the Time. Uh, a very good movie. It is a, a underrated good movie, but it, it's yes. a movie not for everybody. If you enjoy no. acting, yeah, this this would be one to watch. Uh, it's some brilliant performances, and and Robert Pattinson was really really fucking good in it, better than what I thought he would be. Music wise. Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta, you know, uh, 21 Savage, uh, uh, Savage Mode 2, hard album, hard from beginning to end. He got Morgan Freeman on it, narrating hardest shit ever that anybody, <laughs> I don't know how the hell. You mean, that. you mean, you mean Sir 21 the first? <laughs> Sir 21 the first got Morgan Freeman on the album, narrating and explain the, the difference between a snitch and a rat. That is hard. Oh man, that is hard. I, hey, I'm glad. I'm glad 21 bounced back. I'm glad he bounced back. I'm glad to see that. Top five internet moment when he got caught being British. Oh, oh Being god. behind that. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> the material that came following that was 
absolutely unforgettable. <laughs> I will never forget Sir 21 the first. I will never forget it in my life. All right. Well, any uh, messages y'all want to leave with the people? Same um, thing. Same thing I led with. Our prayers, our thoughts and prayers are going out to all those union workers of uh, of uh, the Show Creek Mine, 365 of them being laid off for six months. Uh, guys, girls, we, we, we're, we're thinking about you. We're praying for you. We, we, we hope that somehow you come out on the, on the good side of this. Um, everybody in bereavement for the loss of a loved one. Uh, in 2020, for our for our county and our city in particular, it yeah. has been a rough yeah. year. We yeah. have had we have had casualty after casualty after casualty. Uh, everybody's family I know has been touched, and I, I'm just praying for I, uh, somebody. A friend of mine had a neighbor that lost her son in a car accident uh, uh, just a few days ago. And Jesus Christ, what? Yeah. Uh, Man, it's just our city and our county has been hit hard. I know uh, uh, the country has been hit. The world's been hit hard yeah. by 2020. But right now in particular, my thoughts and prayers are to everybody in bereavement for the loss of a loved one in uh, our, our area, our city of Dora, Alabama, and our uh, county, Walker County. Uh, yeah. Been hit really hard this year, and so my thoughts and prayers to every family out there dealing with the loss of a loved one. Same here. Um, you know, peace, love, and light. You know, keep positive energy around you, and you know, continue to love and and keep it striving day to day. That's the message that I got. Oh yeah, and roll tide. Roll tide, baby. <laughs> Say roll tide one time, shot. Say it one time. Roll. Our Roll. No, oh, it's easy. It out. just rolls off your tongue. <laughs> I'd rather sew my tongue to the carpet. <laughs> How about them bulldogs?